Tonight I'm going to be taking a picture of another galaxy through my camera and telescope in my backyard. While there's thousands of galaxies visible in the night sky, this one is particularly special in many ways. The galaxy that I'll be going after tonight is the Andromeda Galaxy and is the closest spiral galaxy near us that will eventually collide with us in a few billion years. This galaxy will definitely be a challenge and I can't wait to get started on it tonight. So let's get rolling. Yeah, so fast forward about three days. It was not clear that day, but it was pretty good for filming. So you heard me. Tonight I'm going to be taking a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy. And this is a really, really special kind of galaxy. I'm super excited to take a picture of this galaxy through my backyard tonight. And I did it last year, but I didn't really do it in the way that I wanted to. Tonight I'm going for a whole different approach. And I'm going to be trying to get all of the nebula details in this galaxy in comparison to last year where I didn't get any at all. This galaxy is a great target for astrophotography photographers and especially beginners who want to get started in the hobby and I started with this galaxy as my first deep sky object from my backyard. Today I'm going to walk you through how to get an image of the Andromeda galaxy and my game plan for getting an image over the next couple nights and I'm going to be showing you the different ways of taking a picture of the Andromeda galaxy and of course guys I'm going to be revealing my image of the Andromeda galaxy at the end of this video. So come along with me on this well cloudy Saturday as I photograph the Andromeda galaxy through my backyard. My name is Tanner from AstroTan and welcome to the YouTube channel. Alright you guys welcome back to the backyard and I was not lying when I told you that it was cloudy today. Just have a look at this. Yeah crazy but apparently it's supposed to be clear tonight and if the weather says that then I'm just gonna roll with it. So the Andromeda galaxy a perfect target for this season and I mean a perfect target. This galaxy is located right in the constellation of you guessed it Andromeda and it is the perfect season because it is nice and high in the sky and it's out almost all night. The Andromeda galaxy has been noticed by people for hundreds of years and the first pictures of it were taken almost 200 years ago. It is truly a remarkable target and you can even see it visibly with your naked eye if you look hard enough and look where you need to. Even in light polluted skies you could see the Andromeda galaxy just with your eyes and you can even take a picture of it. Visibly you might notice a little fuzzy patch of sky and you might wonder well what the heck is that? But that actually is the Andromeda galaxy and I will show you why you're able to see it in that such brightness. Oh man dude it is cold out here. So the Andromeda galaxy is so bright because simply it is so close and when something is closer to us in the Milky Way or the night sky it naturally appears brighter. The Andromeda galaxy is only two and a half million light years away from us and when you take that perspective into all the other galaxies in space take for example the Whirlpool galaxy that is over 20 million light years away it really is pretty darn close to us. You can even take for example the stars in the night sky that are thousands of light years away from us. So when you take into perspective our Milky Way that has a span of hundreds of thousands of light years. Take for example the Andromeda galaxy that is only just a few million light years away from our galaxy. So that's a pretty tight gap. The Andromeda galaxy is hurtling near our own Milky Way galaxy at around 75 miles per second. Yeah, so right now it is on its way towards us. But don't fear anything, don't get scared about it. It will happen in a few billion years. This galaxy will collide with our own and hopefully form a new super giant galaxy. And I'm saying hoping because sometimes those stars will collide with each other and it'll go boom. But we'll never have to worry about that because that's in a few billion years. So hopefully if we're still around in a few billion years, we might see something crazy happening in the night sky. But for now, we are just hanging out and observing it with our eyes from a distance. This galaxy is rather large and when I mean rather large, I mean it is huge. So you've all seen a full moon, right? I mean, at least I hope you have. And please take a look at it when you can. Hint, hint, get a telescope. And believe it or not, even though you can't see this galaxy as much in the night sky in detail as what you might see in a lot of photos, the Andromeda galaxy is six full moons in length. 
yeah, I'm being serious. So if you were able to see the Andromeda Galaxy in some crazy detail, you would see that the galaxy is six full moons in length. That is just mind boggling. And even though this galaxy is rather large already, the fact that it combines with the close distance from us to the Andromeda galaxy means that it is really, really big in the night sky. You might think that people with all these big telescopes can really hone in on some crazy stuff, and you are exactly right. This galaxy is huge, and you need a wide telescope to be able to see the whole thing. And luckily, my telescope is just small enough to see the whole thing. People with a lot of larger telescopes won't even be able to fit this galaxy in there, and will only have to look at a few parts of the galaxy to really focus on whatever you want to see in there. There's a lot of crazy and cool stuff going on in this galaxy and because it's so close we can see a lot of the stuff. First of all there's something really cool in this galaxy a little bit to the left of it. There is a big star forming region and if you have a big enough telescope you could see a lot of those individual stars. Another big thing that I am really super excited to photograph this time around with my filter, my narrowband filter, is a lot of the nebulous details. This galaxy has a lot of active nebula forming regions which basically means that this nebula is giving birth to stars new stars and you could see a lot of that happen if you have a narrowband filter to isolate those details another awesome thing about this galaxy is that recently some group of astronomers discovered that there is a huge nebulous o3 emission right next to the galaxy this means that there is a little streak of blue space dust that is right next to the galaxy and it takes a lot of time and effort to reveal it but it looks really cool just putting that aside there's also some crazy h alpha space dust all over this galaxy and you need some dedication determination and some crazy good camera gear to get some good pictures of that for right now that is out of my league but who knows maybe i'll try to take a picture of it next year or the year after guess we'll have to find out but for right now i kind of want to stick with the basic emissions of the nebula in this galaxy so let's figure out how i'm going to do that but first hold on I'm not even set up yet. <sighs> this is bad news, but let's get set up. Well, you guys already know I have to hit you with the game plan. It's going to be a new tradition now, so get ready. Man, dude, I am so glad I got this new microphone because now I can actually have some good audio quality. Because the audio quality in the last video... All right, so the game plan for the Andromeda Galaxy tonight is going to, first of all, start off with three clear nights. Yeah, we need three clear nights for this. And with my unobstructed sky... Get that out of the way. My unobstructed sky, I'm hoping to get a full clear night for every single night. What this means about 11 hours of exposure time. This is all going to be with my narrow band filter, the Optolong L Enhance. And I'm not gonna be doing any broadband because I have something called IR bloating, which makes my images appear soft. So we don't need that. So this is all going to be narrow band and we're hoping for the best. And as always, if something goes wrong, I'm going to quit Astro, sell my gear to one of you guys and delete this YouTube channel. So you guys better pray that this all works out. So that's my game plan, but you know, my game plan always works. So we're gonna see what happens. Oh, I forgot to mention my target exposure time. Let's see, let's think about this real quick. Uh, let's go for about, Let's go for about 20 hours this time. 20 hours is a perfect exposure time. So we're gonna hope that I can get 20 hours of exposure time, if not even more. So that's my game plan, guys. You know what I have to do now. So in all seriousness though, let's talk about what I'm actually using to get a picture of the Andromeda Galaxy tonight. So if you're a visual astronomer, the best way to find and locate the Andromeda Galaxy is to first take a look at what constellation it's in. And I told you earlier that it is located in the constellation of Andromeda. So what you're gonna do is find the star Merak or Merak, I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, but you're gonna find that star and then make sure that you are on that star. So make sure you're looking at that star and you can use any kind of sky guide apps on your phone to locate 
this star. Once you find the star Merak, you're just gonna point your telescope a little bit farther up. And there you go, you're gonna notice a huge fuzzy patch of light. And that is mainly looking at the Andromeda's core. That's what makes that galaxy really bright in the sky too. If you're an astrophotographer, obviously you probably have some experience in knowing what you're doing to, lo to locate this galaxy. And to make sure that you wanna get the full galaxy itself, make sure you're using a wide angle lens like the Rokinon 135mm f2 lens, which is a perfect lens for astrophotography. Or use a really wide field refractor or any kind of telescope that covers a wide area of the sky. Make sure that it has the right focal length, and I recommend the focal length for taking a picture of this galaxy is 400 millimeters or under. Once you have this galaxy located and you have it all ready to go, then you're ready to start taking pictures of the galaxy. All right, so let's talk about what I got going on on my setup over here to take the picture of the galaxy. All right, you guys, so starting right off on the bat, I have the same setup that I will always have for probably a long time. So starting off on the top, I got the GOAT, the SV Boney SV503 80 millimeter ED doublet refractor. This is an astrophotography designed telescope and it has a focal length of 448 millimeters. So it's a little bit tight and a little bit close on the galaxy, but it fits it almost perfectly. Next up, I have my main imaging camera, the Artemis C Pro from Player One, and this is a great color camera. This is a dedicated astronomy camera, so it's going to help me get a lot of that nebula details, a lot of that hydrogen alpha emissions, all that stuff that I want to get in this galaxy. So on the camera here, I have the Optolong L Enhance, and this is the narrowband filter that I'm going to use to isolate all the hydrogen details that I want to get in this particular image of the galaxy, as I said. And then right here, I have my second secondary imaging camera. It's not really my imaging camera, but it is a guide camera. This is the ZWO ASI 120MC. This is a good camera for planetary astrophotography as well as a guiding camera because it has a really small sensor and that's really good for getting close on those stars and getting that perfect tracking accuracy. And to help with that, I have my SV Boney 50mm guide scope. And time for the mount. Oh boy. And the most important thing when getting an astrophotography setup, make sure you're choosing the right mount. And this is the Ioptron GEM28. This is a really good astrophotography tracking mount to make sure that the stars are not trailing and I'm getting some long exposure astrophotography in. This is a great little mount. It has a payload capacity of about 28 pounds. So my setup fits just perfectly on this. So we're gonna be all good for tonight. Guys, you have no idea how excited I am to finally get a picture of the Andromeda galaxy in some good detail this time because last year was awful. So I'm actually really excited to get going on this galaxy. It's gonna be awesome. So let's just wait for nightfall. What are we waiting for? Let's go. So you're probably thinking, Tanner, you have three different outfits on in this video. Well, I wanted to let you guys know that yes, that's true, but I just got home from the gym and I just took a shower, so it's the same exact night, so I'm not crazy. This wasn't filmed on 400 different days. But anyway, it is a really cold late November night right now. Let's check the temperature real quick. 30 degrees outside right now and the time 849. Tonight is going fairly well. We do have a little bit of a moon out tonight but that won't be much of a problem if I'm going to be honest. When I'm looking at this galaxy in narrowband it automatically filters out a lot of the moonlight so I should be chilling for quite a long time. The moon's kind of relatively close to the galaxy right now but like I said, my filter is narrow enough to kind of get rid of that moonlight, so. As I mentioned, we're not looking at this galaxy normally and we're trying to get a lot of the nebula in this galaxy aside from all the cool other stuff going on in this galaxy. So sadly, I won't be able to get the full detail of this galaxy, but I will be isolating the cool detail that we don't see in a lot of the broadband images of this galaxy. I wish that I could shoot this galaxy in broadband from a dark sky location because there's so much cool stuff going on around there. There's, you know, honestly, I'm starting to think about when I first started this YouTube channel, it was really hot outside 
and now we're already closing in on December and the winter stuff is starting to come along and it's really crazy to think about you know that we've had this YouTube channel since July already and we have I think about 15 videos out and it's just nuts it's crazy to think about that during school as well like I'm doing this on a school night right now but you know I don't care it's YouTube but it's crazy that like I'm able to film all this stuff on a school night and just you know be so interested in astrophotography in this hobby that you know I I keep it in part of my daily life so but that's enough chit chat I'm gonna show you guys the image of the Andromeda Galaxy and I really am hoping that this is going to be a good image because I really, really want to improve from last year because last year kind of sucked. So, well, that's going to conclude the video for you guys today. And I will see you guys on the next clear night. I don't even know when that's going to be because it's winter and winter equals cloudy. But, you know, we're going to see. So I'll see you guys whenever the next clear night is. I'll see you guys later in clear skies.